Hi everyone, I'm Mike. This is the Sunday Art Show and this week I'm going to be painting the portrait of Floella Benjamin for episode 5 of Portrait Artist of the Week season 2. So I've started out with some mixed media paper and you can see I did a freehand sketch of Floella using this magenta watercolour marker pen and then I've gone back round with a mid blue making various corrections here and there. So the line work's pretty much done. And then what I've done for the background is a mixture of titanium white and cadmium yellow deep. And you can still see some of my kind of first iteration lines here. And now I'm just going to get painting. So I'm using interactive acrylics and I've got titanium white, cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow deep, alizarin crimson, silurian blue, French ultramarine blue, and then tucked in the corner there, some burnt umber. So my first move is going to be to block in the flesh areas of the face, neck, and the little bit of chest that's showing there. So to start off with, <clears throat> I'm going to use cadmium yellow, yellow light and get a you know, fairly, fairly healthy amount of that. The brush I'm using, it's about three quarters of an inch wide, and it's just a synthetic acrylic brush. And let's grab a little corner of alizarin crimson on the brush and mix that in. So what I'm aiming for is a mid-tone. OK, so, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to grab a little touch of ultramarine blue there. And a little touch more. A little touch of the alizarin crimson. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of the burnt umber as well. Let's see what that gives us. That's probably a good starting point. So I'm just going to spritz the surface of the painting with the water spray. And I just did the same to the paint on my palette as well. And let's see what kind of effect we get. So it's coming out perhaps a little too green at the moment, I would say. So I'm just adding a little, the tiniest little touch of the alizarin crimson. But it's not a bad starting point. That's the main thing. So I took quite a lot of care with the, the second set of lines, the, the blue lines, being very careful to measure the relative heights and lateral positions of different features of the face. So I'm reasonably confident in those lines. Now, that's not to say that I won't correct later on. In fact, I almost certainly will. But for this initial blocking in stage, I'm just going to work fairly quickly. And when I can, I'm going to follow the contours of Floella's face with my brush strokes. But I'm going to trust those blue lines at the moment. So I'm working fairly quickly, as you can see. But I'm trusting those blue lines that I put down earlier. And because the thing is with acrylic, uh, as I'm sure most of you know, uh, you know, if you make a mistake, you can just paint over it. So if I if I find I need to improve things later, then it's, it's not a big problem. If you're working transparently with watercolour, then obviously you have to be considerably more careful and have a little bit more of a plan in the sense that um, if you cover up a lighter area with, with darker paint, you know, there's no real way to get that back, at least not with transparent watercolour. So I don't have that concern when I'm working with acrylic. I can make the areas lighter, I can make them darker, at any stage in the painting. Now putting on the paint as I am reasonably thinly, a lot of the initial line work is going to show through and that's actually to my advantage because you know I want to be able to see that underlying structure, the structure of the face that I took a reasonable amount of care to establish. And you can see this watercolour marker pen if I made the paint very wet, it would definitely uh, run a little bit and it, and it may be shifting just a little bit as I put the paint down, but it's not a big deal. 
And in fact, what I found with the watercolour marker pens is that some of them 